What are the health benefits or potential health benefits of drinking hydrogen rich water and structured water? So first and foremost, I want to preface this by saying that I did an entire video on is structured water pseudoscience. So if you want more information on what structured water is, go back and listen to that video. Secondarily, it's been well established, uh, especially amongst the research of Dr. Batmangalaj, that drinking more water, especially if someone is chronically unintentionally dehydrated, simply drinking more water of any kind can lead to improved health outcomes. And by more water or adequate water, that is an N equals one experiment that you have to figure out. A lot of it has to do with how dehydrating your current environment is, meaning how much wireless radiation are you around? How much artificial blue light are you around? How strong is your circadian rhythm? What other potential mitochondrial toxins are you around? And how well can your mitochondria transform fat into water because mitochondria that are, are well capable of burning fat, meaning we're metabolically flexible and can they can burn both glucose and fat, the vast majority of people can only burn glucose efficiently in their mitochondria and not even that efficiently at that, uh, which is why we're, we really hone in on mitochondrial health and support. But that being said, if you can transform, for example, stored body fat in uh, and transport it and burn those electrons for fuel, you can generate four times the amount of metabolic water in your cells. So you can essentially stay hydrated off of your fat, which is a lot like what a camel does. So that being said, it's nuanced, but bare minimum, I think for some people, it's about one liter up to three liters of high quality water a day. And I have a water guide that you could get, you could download on my website for free that talks to you about how you actually get high quality water or how you transform your tap water into high quality, uh, you know, charged structure, just beautifully bioavailable water for you. So that being said, yes, drinking adequate water is absolutely essential. But what specifically about hydrogen rich water and what specifically about structured water? And I want to preface this by saying the research on hydrogen rich water is a bit more extensive than the research on structured water, simply because telling people to like structure their water with a magnet or a device, which is a one-time purchase, doesn't lead to long-term money-making. And so the funding on all types of water research, frankly, is very lacking. Uh, and I'd love to see a lot more, but let's talk specifically. We're gonna talk specifically about hydrogen-rich water. Number one, what is hydrogen-rich water? It is water, and yes, water has eight hydrogen in it, right? Because water is H2O but it is water in which there is an increased amount of dissolved molecular hydrogen gas. So it's not the hydrogen that's associated with the water molecule. It's hydrogen combined with another hydrogen. And that happens in, and it's a gas. So it's a little tiny bubble essentially that is dissolved into the water. And there's certain ways of doing that where you have very stable hydrogen gas dissolved into it. For example, the spring aqua system does it, the axiom system does it. Um, so there's ways that you can dissolve this, uh, this hydrogen gas into the water where it stays fairly stable from over hours, if not over a 24 hour period. However, there's also ways where you can dissolve a tablet into the water and that will produce a high amount of, of hydrogen in the water, but that hydrogen dissipates very rapidly. I would say it loses its therapeutic value within five to 10 minutes max. So that type of water has to be consumed more quickly. That being said, what are the health benefits of consuming water that's rich in molecular hydrogen? Well, is there is there any evidence? Clinically speaking, I've seen it be very helpful for a lot of people, um, both through drinking the hydrogen rich water and also inhaling molecular hydrogen. So why could this be? Number one, that molecular hydrogen is uh, hypothesized as acting as what's called a selective antioxidant. And I actually call it a redox adaptogen. What does that mean? It means that if there's inflammation going on, we it will help to calm the worst of the inflammation, it, but it won't suppress all inflammation. If we suppress all inflammation, we're suppressing a biophotonic light signal that the cell still needs repair. So we never wanna suppress all inflammation, but there are especially damaging what are called radicals or free radicals. One of them being the hydroxyl radical, another being uh, peroxynitrite, both of which can get increased when the mitochondria are experiencing a lot of toxicity, especially from non-native electromagnetic fields. So those radicals can really start to wreak havoc and damage the cell. And it's hypothesized that molecular hydrogen can go in and calm those radicals so they're not creating this massive inflammatory cascade and subsequent damage. But what also has been shown is that there are certain radicals 
like superoxide, that's a beneficial radical, that's a key signaling, essentially a key light or biophoton that gets produced that signals things, signals to the DNA, signals to the other mitochondria, signals to the, the membrane of the cell and the outside of the cell where the immune system lives. And if we were to suppress that one, or if that signal wasn't strong enough, the, the message of inflammation or the signaling mechanism from the light being produced through these reactive oxygen species would not be adequate to stimulate a process, a key process that the cell needs in order to either repair or maintain optimal function. And so interestingly, molecular hydrogen has been shown to, yes, it can reduce the amount of these very damaging radicals, but it can actually increase the more beneficial signaling ones as well. In that effect, I call it an adaptogen. So it can really optimize signaling while minimizing damage. And so that's kind of like the underlying mechanism here. So what do we see in actual quote unquote research? Well, there was one 24 week randomized placebo control trial, double blinded, that they took 60 adults with metabolic syndrome and they had them drink hydrogen rich water. Typically these studies, um, in general, I'm just gonna say, go with about half a liter of hydrogen rich water up to about a liter of hydrogen rich water a day. In this particular study, they had them drink this hydrogen rich water for 24 weeks. And the group that drank the hydrogen rich water actually showed improved fasting glucose, improved LDL, LDL cholesterol and, and total cholesterol, which are markers that I think mainstream science puts a little bit more emphasis on than I do, but still, um, it, we had improvements in some inflammatory markers, some markers of oxidative stress. There was a trend down in BMI. Um, and so it was a very interesting trial to show that simply changing the type of water that someone drinks, not even necessarily drinking more water than someone normally drinks, but just changing the hydrogen content of the water can have a beneficial effect. And picture if this is picture now if someone does this for the rest of their lives and what those outcomes may look like. There's also a six month pilot study in a more elderly population. Again, they drank about half a liter of hydrogen rich water a day. And in these older adults, they found that there was uh, beneficial changes in, again, markers of inflammation, oxidative stress, and telomere length. So improved length of the telomeres, which are the cap end caps of the DNA. The longer the telomere, essentially the less, the, the less aged the cell is or the less biological age a person has acquired. And so by having improved telomere length, it's indicative of essentially an anti-aging process that's being stimulated. Um, there's other uh, been other small, small clinical trials. I've also seen this in clinical practice with improved athletic performance or especially athletic recovery, uh, the ability to do a maximal amount of, uh, you know, essentially athletic output with reduced oxidative stress markers. Um, so really, there's a lot in there that, that can that we can see when it comes to if we if, what these translate to is it, regardless of what's causing the oxidative stress, that oxidative stress is usually being generated in the mitochondria, meaning a diabetic might be dealing with oxidative stress because of elevated blood glucose. Uh, someone with neurological conditions may be dealing with elevated oxidative stress because of a heavy metal exposure or this protein aggregation. Um, and so my hypothesis that I've seen in clinical practice is that regardless of what is driving the oxidative stress, we can improve mitochondrial function and ultimately cellular cleanup. The other thing about hydrogen rich water is that it does improve mitochondrial membrane potential which I talk about in a previous video as having that membrane potential is essential and synonymous with having healthy mitochondrial function. That membrane potential in the mitochondria also is synonymous with having a healthy cellular membrane or voltage in the cell. So they go hand in hand. So if we can do things that optimize mitochondrial health and mitochondrial membrane potential, it can go a long way in improving health outcomes regardless of the population we're looking at. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about is structured water. There, there is not as, like I said, there's not as much evidence regarding structured water, simply because the funding for structured water is not going to be there. I've looked at the, I personally have looked at structured water effects on my plant growth, my, the, the health of my animals. We drink it as a family. Um, but when you dive into the actual research, uh, there, there are, have been small little studies that have been done either on laboratory animals or farm animals over the course of a couple of decades. And these are common things that you'll see. Um, and so one of them, you can look up an article that's actually called structured water effects on animals, uh, probably published about five years ago or so that you that dives into some of this if you're interested. 
But what we're what we actually see is very similar to what we see in the human uh, trials regarding hydrogen rich water. We see reduced markers of oxidative stress, improved glycemic or blood sugar control, improved insulin responses, so improved insulin sensitivity. Uh, we see improved blood lipid profile. Uh, for in terms of the animal, they'll, they'll analyze things like semen quality, and they'll show improved um, markers of sperm health. Uh, and so it's very interesting uh, when you look at that, you can see very similar, um, you know, health outcomes when it comes to comparing both hydrogen rich water and structured water. Interestingly, when water is structured, you can dissolve more hydrogen in it. So I don't think they've ever looked at or controlled for how much hydrogen is in the structured water in these studies, but that's just an interesting thing to take into consideration. In both animals and plants, you'll also say, see improved growth rates, right? So nothing, cra nothing crazy like, oh no, they're growing out of controllably that they have some sort of uh, pathology taking place. But no, you're gonna see better growth for plants. You'll see improved yield for the plants. So you can you can absolutely see improved health outcomes when it, co or when it comes to animal health that's been studied. But like I said, it's on a small scale. There have been ones done on humans as well, drinking structured water you will see improvements in HRV, which is indicative of better balance between the sympathetic and parasympathetic activity. You've seen the likelihood of a reduction in body fat. It was trending that way, but you cannot necessarily make the conclusion that drinking structured water will you know, be a fat loss miracle in any capacity. But anytime you improve mitochondrial health, which is what these types of studies are alluding to, you improve the ability of the mitochondria to bur burn both glucose as a fuel and fat as a fuel source. So improved body fat composition can, can be a downstream ramification from that. Um, the what there is one company that has invested a lot of time and money into doing their own research and that's the company called Analemma Wand. Now I'm, you know, I, I, there's a lot of ways to structure water, like I said. So this is not by not by no means the only one. And in fact, you can structure water through thought, through intention, through placing it in the moonlight. So it doesn't have to always be about buying a device. And I've got a water guide that goes into all the different ways that you can structure your water. But in terms of Analemma one, I really respect the fact that they are doing a lot of research on their on their particular product simply because of the fact that they have, um, you know, I mean, they have a product that I think is being shown to improve health outcomes and no one is going to fund independent research, like I've said before. So they're reliant. So you're going they're going to get the criticism of, well, you know, they're funding their own research. Of course, they're getting beneficial outcomes. But interestingly, they're doing research on human, plant and animal health. With human health, you can make the criticism that it's as a, the result of a placebo effect. But with plant and animal, the, they, they're, they're not going to think, oh, look, this analemma wand is going to do something different to my water. And so the out, when you combine all the different outcomes that they're getting from the plant research, the animal research, and the human research, it's painting a pretty cool picture that I want to dive a little bit deeper into. When it comes to the plant and animal research, it's gonna be similar to what I've talked about previously. So you'll see improved markers of, for example, crop yield or plant growth. You'll see uh, reduced costs in terms of veterinary visits or just subjectively improved animal health or, or even um, size, for example, chickens growing bigger when they drink a, a structured water. So really it's very similar to what we talked about before. The human one, the human research has a couple of even more, I'd say, interesting things to dive into, simply because they, uh, again, they've really focused on this. So one of the things that they, let, let's talk about one of the, let me first talk about how this wand even structures the water, right? Because I'm just holding this thing up and you're like, what the heck is this? This is the casing for it, right? This is the actual wand. And as you can see inside of the wand, you might be able to see that bubble moving. Inside of the wand, it's full of what they call their mother water. What and it's inside of this sp um, specific quartz glass. So this mother water, they describe it as this full spectrum coherent water that takes about a year to prepare, meaning they've essentially taken water that has gone through a complete hydrological cycle, has kind of bubbled its way back up to the earth and contains a, what we would call all of the beneficial energy and information from the various frequency exposures of the earth lunar cycles, solar changes, seasonal changes, um, mineral frequencies, all sorts of things that can be put into this mother water. 
Uh, and then be, they specifically chose a quartz crystal wand because quartz is the only glass that allows all frequencies through, meaning that quartz allows all of any information essentially. Uh, and again, listen to my structured water video if you want. About, it's called Is Structured Water Pseudoscience about how water can hold this energy and information. But essentially, now that this water is full of this energy and information, it can share it and impart it with other water water that it comes into contact with. Now, I posed one question to Analemma. Actually, I didn't pose them to Analemma. I posed it when I was on Alex X podcast about I would about how I would love to see similar research through Analemma being done with just the quartz wand alone, because quartz crystal by itself has been shown to structure water. And, you know, I guess someone associated with Analemma was listening to that podcast because they reached out to me and they said, actually, we have done that research and we it's the improved outcomes that we see when it comes to health markers requires, yes, the quartz crystal wand, but also the water inside of it as well. So interestingly, now that water, then you can put it into a, this wand, you can put into a glass of water and you'll stir it for about 10 seconds. And after stirring for about 10 seconds, you will have then structured your water with the energy and information from the wand, the water in the wand. And in terms of the different claimed health benefits, uh, they found things like increased ATP production. Again, it's a mar marker of improved mitochondrial function. So in a double blind placebo controlled study, they found that drinking this specific type of water, so they basically drank analemma wand structured water for two months, increased ATP levels by 20%. Again, huge improvement in terms of mitochondrial health. If we improve mitochondrial health, we improve other health outcomes. They also found that there was a, a shift and change into a more healthy gut microbiome profile. So when you took a look at the ratios of essentially the quote unquote harmful gut bacteria versus the more beneficial, they found a reduction in dysbiosis and an improvement in the, the more beneficial species in the gut microbiome. They found um, kind of immune and anti-inflammatory effects. So they had 19 adults drink about 30, 35-ish ounces or more of this water a day. And they found major shifts in anti-inflammatory or like major shifts in inflammatory markers towards an anti-inflammatory uh, profile, meaning reductions in certain types of cytokines or molecules that are produced when the immune system is highly active in fighting inflammation. They also did, they also looked at something called biological age reversal. There's a specific assessment called a glycan age test. Glycan, if you have glycation, it's basically how much sugar is attached to a certain molecule. And anytime a sugar is attached to a, to a molecule, it renders the molecule useless. It harms the molecule. This is well studied, especially through the lens of something called hemoglobin A1C or HA1C. Hemoglobin A1C is essentially a measurement of how much of hemoglobin, which is a healthy, which is on our red blood cells and used to transport oxygen to the mitochondria, how much of that hemoglobin in the blood is rendered useless because a sugar has been attached to it or there's been this like glycation effect. So this specific glycan age test looks at glycation of antibodies. Um, so glycation on a specific um, subset of, of the immune system. And they found that consumers who drank this water over a, a three month period of time in reverse their biological age by up to 12 years, meaning that they had that much of a reduction in glycation simply from drinking water. Uh, other research on the humans have shown improved brainwave patterns, meaning getting out of that high beta and being in a more balanced low beta alpha state, which you know is a quieter mind. It's someone who's more creative, calm, improved sleep quality, things like that. So the quality of the water that we drink absolutely does matter. Step one, make sure the water that you're drinking is purified. It's got the minerals and then you can add the structure to it all the better. And then if you want to start to explore hydrogen rich water, that's just an added therapeutic effect that we're doing to enhance our water. Again, if you're interested, I've got guides on my website, free guides on my website that go all into this in terms of transforming your water, because I find this to be something so simple, yet so fundamental to overall human and specifically mitochondrial health.